Hello and welcome, I'm your host, Elias Sarantopoulos. This time around, in After Effects, I will be answering the question, how to use the speed and value graph to smooth your animations over time inside the graph editor. All right, so let us go ahead and start this off inside After Effects. I've got a couple of layers that I will animate in order to show you how to work with the speed graph and the value graph inside the graph editor. Now, a quick tip before we animate those two layers is that the anchor point is not center on either layer. Now, the anchor point refers to the point in which all transformations are manipulated from. So it's a good practice to set the anchor points before you begin animating your composition. So in this case, I'm going to go up to the layer menu and inside the transform, I'm going to go ahead and use the center anchor point in layer content, or I can also use the keyboard shortcut, which I'm going to do for this one. For the circle dot, I'm going to run the keyboard shortcut. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inner circle and inside the align panel here, I'm going to center this horizontally and vertically. I will do the same for the circle dots. I'm just going to move this out of the way a bit, to, let's say around here. Great. Now I'm just going to lock this inner circle and focus on the circle dot. To show you how to change the spacing and speed between frames, eventually using the speed graph. But first, let's go ahead and set the animation motion path. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and animate the position property. So for that, I'm going to press the letter P on the keyboard. And P stands for the position. I'm also going to make sure that the current time indicator is right at the beginning of the timeline. And then I'm going to create the first keyframe by clicking on this stopwatch right here. And here's the first keyframe. Great. Now I'm going to scrub the current time indicated to 15 seconds. And then I'm going to click and drag and move this circle dot, let's say around here. And here is the motion path. I'm going to continue this to 30 seconds. Move this over here. And I'm doing this, as I mentioned before, because it's a great example for us to see how the timing will change through this motion path. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and press the space bar to preview this animation. And as you can see, it's just a very boring animation, just a circle dot going around. So how can we spice things up? So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to click on this vertex right here. And once I do, you can see those two dots. So if I click and drag, you can see those two directional handles. Now these two handles move together at the same time. But what I want to do here is actually I want to split those handles so I can have control on both sides independently and make this a discontinuous Bezier path, of course, through this vertex. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to hold down the Alt key. And when I click and drag this control handle, I'm going to position this right here, release both Alt and the mouse here, and then just click and drag this directional handle and put it right there. I'm going to do the same one for this vertex here. I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key. I'm going to click and drag. I'll release everything. Move this control handle here. Click on this vertex. Hold down the Alt key or the Option key. Move this down here. Click on this directional handle and move it there. And as for this, since this is an open path, I can just click on this directional handle. Click on the other end and just move this one here. All right, great. Now let's give a little space here. All right, and perhaps let me move this a little bit out of the way. Perhaps a little bit here and just move this out of the way too. Like so. So let's go ahead and press the space bar. And as you can see, we have a more meaningful motion path to work with and change the space and speed of the frames. Now let's talk about this motion path and what it means. 
The spacing between those dots in the motion path indicates speed, and each dot is the position of an anchor point at each frame. Right now, let's go ahead and press the space bar to preview this animation. This animation is a linear animation, which by the way, is indicated by these diamond icons. All right, that means the animation begins instantly at the first keyframe and continues to the next one at a constant speed and velocity. And that's why we have an equal amount of distance traveled between every single one of these frames. So let me show you what I mean. This is the distance that I'm referring to between each of these frames. And that's why we have a linear animation. Now, in the graph editor, once we click on the position and then click on the graph editor. And by the way, if you click on this graph type here, we are working inside the speed graph. So inside the graph editor, the segments connecting those points here with linear interpolation appears as straight lines. This is a straight line, this is a straight line, and so on. Now, these points here, these basically are keyframes. So when I select one and I switch to the layer bar mode, we can see within the timeline, they're at the same point in time as the ones inside this speed graph. All right, just, just keep that in mind. Now, when we hover over each of these keyframes here, we can see the property, the position property that is measured by pixels per second over time. And the speed graph shows how it calculates between those keyframes. So let's go ahead and take advantage of the speed graph and fine tune those keyframes to make changes over time. So it will take longer for this circle dot to travel over the beginning and end of its segment of the motion path instead of traveling at a constant speed and velocity. So how do we do that? How would do we change time? Well, first of all, we need to select all those keyframes. And again, I am inside the graph editor, inside the speed graph. I'm gonna select all the keyframes by using the keyboard shortcut. And then I'm going to change the keyframe type from linear interpolation to easy is. There are several ways you can do this. We can right click here, for example, and under the keyframe assistant, I can use the easy ease. I can also use the F9 as a keyboard shortcut, or I can just go at the very bottom of the graph editor and just use easy ease. All right, here it is. So the speed graph dramatically changes comparing it to the linear interpolation. Now, instead of straight lines, we have curved paths. Also, looking at the motion path, all right? There is less space between frames in the beginning and end of the animation, and there is more space in between. See that? So what can we do to actually improve that even more and change the timing using the speed graph? What we're gonna do is actually, we're going to select, for example, this keyframe and drag this influence handle coming out out of each of these keyframes. This way, when we edit the curve, the gap between frames will shrink, talk about the beginning or end of the segment here, and it will widen in between, okay? So let's go ahead and, for example, pull this influence handle out. And as you can see, I'm holding also the, the shift key on my keyboard. And what happens is it influences the amount of time the animation it takes to start off. You see, it starts at zero, it picks up at 3000 something, and then it's down, down to zero. Let me bring this up even more. Do the same one here. Let's see, so now it picks up to 5000. So let's see how this works. You see, it's a much better animation here. Let's look at the motion path. You see the distance here, it's much less in the beginning and end of this motion path here at each segment, but there is much more space in between here. Great. Let's do this one here. I'm going to bring this handle in. 
this handle out here and I'm trying to kind of match this, right? All right, so let's play this again. There we go. You see, it starts up, it speeds up and dies down again. Great. That is one thing. Now, what else can we do? There's another thing we can do. We can actually change the speed, the timing. Right now, we change the spacing. How about making the animation even faster? How can we do this? Well, what we can do is actually we can click and drag this keyframe up and do that, which is a nice way to do it. But I highly recommend you use actually a numeric value. So you control your animation precisely. So I'm going to undo this control zero command, see? And then I'm going to double click on this keyframe. And this is going to bring the keyframe velocity window. So in this case, I'm going to focus on the outgoing velocity because the motion is coming out of that keyframe. So for the speed, let me cancel this out. Right now, the speed says 5,000 something. So double click here again. I'm going to change this to, let's say, 5,000. And then for the influence, I'm going to set this to 70% and click OK. Here it is. As for this one, double click. And now I'm going to work on the incoming velocity. The incoming velocity is because we are moving into this keyframes motion. I'm going to actually leave the speed to zero pixels per second. So the motion eases into it. But I would definitely change the influence. I'm going to set this to 70% also and click OK. There you go. So we know this motion. When it comes to this keyframe, this is going to go faster. Whoop, do you see the difference? There we go. Let's double click on this. Again, inside the keyframe velocity, the speed, I'll set this to 5000. Influence 70%, click OK. And actually for this one, since I kind of know this is at the end of the animation as well, I can bring this in to let's say 70%. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview this animation, press the space bar. There we go, you see? Beautiful. We have a great animation. So over here, it's going to be faster, right? And of course, this is slower here. Well, it depends, of course, what you want to do and what kind of animation you want to accomplish. So basically, this is how we change the speed and timing of keyframes using the speed graph inside the graph editor. All right, so let's go ahead and focus on the inner circle layer and actually create two separate property values, one for the position and the other one for the scale. So I'm going to make sure that the current time indicator is at the beginning of the timeline. And since I'm going to animate the position property, I'm going to go ahead and press the letter P on the keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the stopwatch to create my first keyframe. And I'm going to scrub the current time indicator to, let's say, 15 seconds, and then go ahead and add another keyframe. Then I'm going to scrub the current time indicator back to the first keyframe, click on the first keyframe, and then click and drag, and I'm holding the shift key as I do, and just place this around here. Actually, I'm going to set this specifically on the position Y to 600 pixels, just because I want to have round numbers and for, the, for no other reason. Okay, great. So let's make sure that we're on the position and click on the graph editor. And just to remind you that we are still, if I click on the graph type, we are still on the speed graph. In this case, we're going to use the value graph. And something that you need to know about the value graph is that we adjust property values with the value graph, whether it be scale, rotation, or position. And something else to remember, some properties consist of more than one value or dimension. In this case, the position property consists of two values. The position value graph includes two colored lines. In this case, the red line represents the position X and the green line represents the position Y. Now, right now, as you can see, we have a linear animation 
indicated by the straight segments. So let us go ahead and convert those keyframes to easy ease. So first of all, I'm going to mark you select all of those keyframes, and then I'm just going to use the easy ease. There we go, okay? So what just happened now is that we have an S-shaped curve, and then here we have a straight line. And that's because we didn't animate on the x-axis. Now let's go ahead and read this for a second. In the beginning, we are at the 600 pixels. And when I scrub this, we are at the 360 pixels. Now, another thing to note is that the fact that there are no handles coming out from the Y position, either on the first keyframe or the second keyframe, in order for us to manipulate the curve as we did before with the speed graph. Again, just to remind you, some properties consist of more than one value, and the position property in this case includes values for both the X and the Y coordinates. Therefore, we are not able to edit the S curve with the position property that has both values locked to each other. So the trick here is to separate those two. So I'm going to right click on the position property and then use the separate dimensions. And now we have the X position property and the Y position property separately. And the color reflects that inside the value graph. All right. Now, again, in our example, there is no animation on the X axis. So what I'm going to do is to make my life easier here. I'm going to remove the keyframes on the X position and then focus on the Y position. Now, because we separated dimensions, the S shape curve got a little bit messed up. So I'm going to mark you select this two, and then again, use the easy is like so. Great. Stick that, click on this keyframe and bring this out and just make sure you hold on the shift key as you do. And I'm going to bring this in. Again, I'm moving the directional handles. If I play this, it starts slow, picks up, and then dies down. It's just, it's a very short distance to cover. All right, so what is that we're going to do? Just make sure you're on the inner circle. I'm going to press the letter S on the keyboard because I'm also going to animate the scale property. So I'm going to press the letter S on the keyboard. I'm going to switch back to the layer bar mode. I'm going to make sure that on the very first keyframe inside the timeline, and I'm going to click on the stopwatch to create the first keyframe. Great. I'm also going to press the letter U on the keyboard to see all visible keyframes. I'm going to scrub the current time indicator to 15 seconds. Add another keyframe. Perhaps I'm going to go down to 10%. Let me scrub this to like 35 seconds. Bring this to 70%. At the very end, I'm going to set the scale to 100%. All right. Just make sure on the scale, I'm going to bring up the graph editor. As you can see, we have, again, a linear animation. So I'm going to mark you select all of these keyframes. I'm going to use, again, the easy ease, like so. All right. So let's play this. Already things are looking better, but I'm not happy on this point right here. So as I mentioned before, with the value graph, we can actually change the properties. In this case, I'm going to change the scale property. So I'm going to click on that. Right now we're on the 70% and I'm going to bring this to 100. All right, nothing special is going to happen here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to do one more trick, which is I'm going to overshoot this. Overshoot refers to going beyond the resting value of 100% scale in this case. Right now we're on the 100% scale. So we're going to overshoot this beyond the resting value of 100% and then return back to the resting value. So what I'm going to do is inside the value graph, I will push this one. Uh, off the space and beyond this horizontal line, and I'm going to overshoot this. Let's play this. There we go. See that? Great. So we have a mix and max here. 
So it's not a boring animation. Let's also make the circle dot visible on the layer here. And let's look at this. I think it looks pretty good. We can actually overshoot this even more. There we go. Split that again. Press the space bar on your keyboard for the RAM preview. Great. All right, so to sum it up, if the speed graph measures speed or velocity over time, whereas the value graph measures the value over time. Thank you everyone for visiting my channel and watching the inspired lectures and tutorials. Do not forget to subscribe and share the knowledge.